Yo, yo, CoreyGFitness.com members. Gcast episode seven. I got my homeboy, Mike Big Bad Wolf, here on today's episode. Listen, do y'all know what it is to have 900 pounds on a bench press over your face? I bet y'all don't, but this guy does. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, I want to have Mike on the show. We can talk about just the pursuit of greatness in the bench press, West Side Barbell, going through some, you know, all kinds of perseverance, and at the end of the day, he could probably help you with your bench press a little bit. He knows a, th- a thing or two, ain't it, Mike? You think? I think so. <laughs> That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Mike, give us a little background. Talk to us about where you grew up, how you got into lifting weights, um, how long you've been doing it for. All right, as, as far as lifting weights, uh, obviously, you know, I, I started through high school football like everybody else. Um, wasn't that great with it. Wasn't a good football player, any of that stuff. But uh, through uh, through years of training – and uh, just wanted to get the uh, the bigger. I was kind of, you know, it's. I come from a skateboard background. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Super heavyweight bench presser, skateboard yeah. background. Yes, yes. Trey just got interested. He's like, wait, wait, wait a second. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> All right, go I ahead. Was, I was straight up skater, late '80s, early '90s. So. Um, Could you ollie? Yeah. Oh, I can 360 kickflip. This down motherfucker. Steps. Okay, let's go. Oh, Look yeah. at me on my basic knowledge trying oh, to call yeah. out the Ollie. Oh, yeah. I can't even fucking Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's uh, sadly during skateboarding, though, I broke my uh, left ankle four times, my right one twice. Damn. And, um, so that, that was the beginning of the injuries. But um, I came out of the skater world into the uh, quote football jock world. Yeah. And uh, this probably goes back all the way to 91 ish. My uh, my dad had actually bought us a weight set during the summertime that we had in our garage, mm-hmm. and my brother and I we both started doing a little bit of weightlifting with that and kind of playing around in the garage with it, and then you know, to to uh, uh, try and get a little bit further into it, I started lifting there at the high school, mm-hmm. and uh, but to be able to lift in the weight room, it was either gym class or you had to do it in football. Gotcha. And uh, so I decided to go ahead and try football out. I'd played a little bit when I was younger, played uh, eighth grade high, or eighth grade, mm-hmm. um, skipped my freshman, sophomore year, went back my junior year. Absolutely hated it. Everything about it, <laughs> except for the lifting the weight. So it was. I, I feel that the same way, Mike. That's where I, uh, that's why I actually kind of get the, the, the first bug at. Okay. Seriously. Do you guys have, do you guys have powerlifting team? We do or, not. Okay. We do now, but we did not then. Yeah. And uh, but that was uh, that was in St. Mary's, Ohio. Shout out to the Rough Riders. Yeah, yeah. And uh, started started playing ball there. Um, lifting, like I said, um, the football aspect of it, I was I didn't care. Uh, all I wanted was that weight room. Well, then after football was over, I still wanted to lift. So my mom actually bought me a membership at the local YMCA. Nice. And uh, started training there. Well, then me and the wife started getting a little bit more serious in our relationship. And uh, she actually moved to the town across the lake from us. Okay. And uh, so I would go over there, and I would spend the time, the weekends over there in Salina, Ohio, where we live at now. And um, there was a place there. It was just a little fitness club. And they had a pool and indoor tennis and some hockey and stuff like that. So Mike that. Wolf started working out where there was indoor tennis. Yes. <laughs> yes. I find that. The, <laughs> I the, find that pretty funny. <laughs> But uh, those guys there, they kind of took me under their wing. Um, Just some strong guys oh, there. Yeah, real strong guys. I mean, they were they were all the bodybuilder guys, but mm-hmm. you know, they took me. I under knew you their... had some bodybuilder in you, Wolf. Know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, thought about that. Came uh-huh. back to powerlifting. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, uh, those guys kind of took me under their wing, showed me some stuff, and then from there. Here's uh, the other thing too, Mike. Just I'll stop you there for a second. Yeah, bodybuilding yeah. really. Is just a ton of accessory work. Oh, yeah. People get it all twisted up, like you have to do what, but it's really you're doing both anyway. Right. You might not be doing just enough, like certain things for stage ready, but most really good power lifters are fucking jacked and have a great bodybuilding base, don't you yeah. think? Oh yeah. So. So that's a great place to start. Like I said, and that's that's where I, that's where I actually started at was yeah. bodybuilding. Yeah. I mean, all of my stuff. I mean, I read the flex magazines, the muscle mags. Yep. Uh, the muscular development stuff like that, and um, when I actually got a. The job that I work at now, back this was all the way back in '94, I had moved to a town called New Bremen, which is south of us, about 10 miles, mm-hmm. and uh, that's where I worked at. And they had just put a local YMCA there. And um, some of the old Ys had actually oh good yeah. gyms back oh in yeah. the day, like yeah. sneaky good. Yeah. So it um it it started there, and um, there was actually in back of one of the I don't remember I think it was Muscle Mag, 
Chris Confessor used to write a power page in there. Chris Confessor. Yeah, he that, got, hey, he I got, usually recognize all the yeah, names. I don't yeah, recognize yeah. that one, Mike. He was he was a big 198 or like 220 or okay, guy. and uh, but he ended up passing away. I do believe it was from a car wreck. Wow. Um, yeah, that's shortly after. But I'd actually wrote into him asking him some advice for lifting, and uh, when I uh, wrote into him, I hmm. told him that I was training at the local Y, and he made the made the comment when he uh, when he uh, had my art or had my uh, uh, letter in the yeah. article there he said that it sounded like a good idea to start a powerlifting gym uh, it only took me 20 years to do it but yeah <laughs> but, but you actually but experienced actually having did, it actually did but uh that ymca is where i met um chief randy houseworth okay and he is the guy that got me into powerlifting and when i first met him i was i was maybe benching 185 190 that's amazing and, um, to think you only bench 185 know, when right? I've seen you bench like 600 raw and <laughs> board presses and shit at West Side. It's crazy. <laughs> but <laughs> it yeah. goes to show that everyone starts somewhere, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but I seen I seen Chief. He was um, he was over there and he was benching, and uh, he had four plates aside. He took it out himself and did it for six reps. And uh, yeah, I just I, I just kind of sat there and watched him like, who the fuck is yeah. this guy? And, uh, Dude, 405 yeah. for six reps, like when you're not with no spot oh, or yeah. taking out yourself, oh, yeah. is pretty serious. Well, it uh, I kind of I kind of just eyed him the rest of the time. Well, then, uh, and, and sorry, Chief, if you listen to this, but I'm telling the story. Yeah, <laughs> he hates this. But um, we went and uh, I went to the locker room and I changed into some swimming trunks and yeah, went and jumped jumped in the hot tub. And uh, a few minutes later, here he comes and he hops in the hot tub. And, okay, and he calls me out on my on my build. He tells me he's like, you know. He goes, you ever think about getting into powerlifting, kid? He goes, you're built to bench press. I love when the OGs yeah. reach out like oh, that yeah. oh, and yeah. say, like, dude, you need to be about this. Yep, yep. And um, that's it's funny because cool. he hates it when I say that we met each other in, a in hot the hot tub. tub. But, but damn it, <laughs> Chief, that's where we met. <laughs> that's pretty amazing. <laughs> but uh, he uh, he grabbed me, took me under his wing. The next yeah. day we, we started training. And um, he's uh, I'm getting ready to do a contest coming up here July 25th. And, yeah. It may be my last contest for a while with all the injuries sure. going on, but um, he retired probably about three years ago from competitive lifting four sure. years ago, and wow. uh, dropped off a ton of body weight. But I mean, we still stay in contact, and that's so cool. I, I, I think you got to reach out like that. I oh, know yeah. you've done it a bunch. I've done it a bunch. You see guys that have it, and you're just like, oh yeah, man. And yep, he yep. probably saw something that he wished he had in you. Yep, exactly. So, and um, we uh, we uh, like I said for. 20 plus years i mean we we competed either either he lifted or i lifted and uh wow. either i handled him or he handled me and then it would have been 2012 we both went to the uh border wars mm -hmm. and it was the first time in basically 17 18 years that me and him had actually uh competed to, to was actually the same to time on the same stage okay at the same time and that had uh, to be we awesome both, well we both qualified for worlds yeah and um so wow. 2012, we went out to the WPC Worlds out in Las Vegas together, and being out there at the WPCs in Vegas, sure, he took the uh, the Masters uh, 50 to 55 year class, and I took the Men's how strong Open. how strong was that day for him? Um, I think he benched like a 470 or 480, Whoa. so it, it, it like a 370 body weight, but I wow, mean, also I mean pushing pushing 60 years old. Yeah, that's so, serious. Then, Raw uh, or in a shirt. Yeah. Oh, that was raw. That was raw. That's why I thought. I remember yeah, you yeah, telling yeah. me that story. That's why I want yeah. to make sure that wasn't an adventure. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was raw. So and then, um, then I I think I hit a five seventy eight out there. Wow. And uh, had the uh, second biggest raw bench, and uh, Laszlo ended up doing like a six seventy something out there that that day. But uh, Laszlo is from like Hungary or one of them Eastern European yeah, yeah, yeah. countries. But but yeah, it was uh, it was a cool experience for me and Chief. And uh, our first worlds together, our first national meet together, we both won, and then uh, so cool. Our first worlds together. Well, I shouldn't say we won. I took second at that that Can Am game. Yeah. But um, he took first, and then, like I said, we got to go out to Vegas, and Vegas was a blast. It's uh, I'm so looking forward to going back up. There oh, again. I'm sure. So talk, so talk to me about how you get to that spot, and then where's the transition? I know I've heard this story, but I want you to tell it like. You know, you either meet Louie or have aspirations to go to West Side, <laughs> and that you actually drove the West Side oh, one yeah. time and didn't go oh, in. Yeah, 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 yeah. tell yeah, the story, Mike. Story. <laughs> all right, well, I mean, this this takes us all the way back to – I did my first contest in 94, and that that was my first ever experience with the West Side guys. Yeah. Um, those are the dudes that you see in the in the West Side versus the World movie yeah. 
where it powerlifting up. USA oh, yeah. all those years oh, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, you read about these guys, and and when and when they walked in, I mean, you know, it was funny because Panora always says they got the good guys and we were the bad guys. And I mean, that's, and that's how it that's felt too. How it felt. Yeah. I mean, these dudes walked in. I mean, it was like a biker gang or some shit. You got out of their way. <laughs> and, uh, Mike, and the, you know, my first experience, I was only eighteen, and I was yeah. at that. They Louis called it Trailer Park Nationals nice. down in Wintersville, Ohio. Nice, it was nice. the day Louis benched six hundred or yeah, six hundred when he was fifty. Yeah. And I was only eighteen years old, and that's exactly what happened. There's no internet then. This is like ninety seven, ninety eight. He rolls in with uh, you know. Um, Who's the guy that was in the movie? Demo and all these guys, right, right. but I don't know who they are. Right. And I'm like, who the fuck? It, it, Louis brings his own bar. Right. He's in a denim. Yep, I've yep, never yep. seen oh, all yeah. this. Stuff. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm, dude. That's crazy shit, <laughs> I was man. like, what's going on? So you felt the same way, oh. and you're a 600 oh, pound yeah. bencher well, I at that at, time. I wasn't at the time. Yeah. I, was, I was about a, a five. About a five twenty five venture shirted. shirted. Okay, shirted. Not okay, shirted. okay. And um, like I said, that's in. Uh, this was this was like I said, yeah. ninety five, ninety six. Okay. So and maybe you. Was, hey, so but you weren't there yet. So you weren't in that group when no, I saw him. Okay, okay. It was it was ninety six. Um, it was a winter or it was a um, state meet down fall of ninety six. I'm sorry, take that back. Fall of ninety five, somewhere in that area. Okay. But um, anyways, we uh we uh go in there and there was. There was a lifter down there. He had uh, he had went for a, a 700 bench, mm-hmm. and I mean to me it looked good. Yeah, I mean it was perfect. And the judges red lighted him on it, didn't give it to him, and uh, would have actually gave him like a, a national record, and it would have gave him the win. Sure. Well, the win ended up going to the West Side guy. Okay. And uh, so, anyways, I go in and I, I take a piss, and when I'm standing there at the urinal taking a piss. Freaking Lou walks in and he's he's the urinal next to me. Yeah. And Mike's um, meeting all these guys in the bathroom he, in the world right? time. <laughs> this, is, this is crazy shit, right? Go ahead. <laughs> but Lou Lou's in there and um I get to talking to him and he asks sure. me, he's like, Well he goes, uh he goes, What'd you think about that seven hundred pound bench? The guy's name was Scotty G. He's he's since passed on himself. Rest in peace, Scotty. But yeah. it um I told Lou, I was like, shit, Lou, this is a look good to me. I was like, I don't know what they red lighted him for. Yeah. And he was like, well, that's what the hell I thought, too. And I said, well, I says, what are you mad about? I said, I gave your dude the win. He yeah. told me. He goes, I don't want my fucking guys to win like that. He don't want it to he win. Go, he goes, if my guys are going to win, he goes, I want them to win correctly. Yeah. He goes, because he goes, if he would have beat my guy, he goes, that's going to make my guys go train harder. Well, then Lou Love calls that. me out at that point in time. He says, hey, he goes, you're that Mike Wolf kid, right? And I was like, yeah. I said, that, that's me. And, yeah. Uh, He's like, your ass needs to come see me. He's like, you got potential. And uh, how did so, it feel to hear that, Mike? Oh, dude, you know what? <laughs> it's it was, like Michael Jordan yeah, telling I, you, like, I, you I, can play I, basketball. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, that's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> I, I look back on it now. I mean, at the time, I mean, this 19, 20 year old sure. kid. I mean, a little intimidated, a little scared. How could by you it. not be? I know, right? I mean, yeah. this is the guy you read about in the sure. sport that you love. Yeah. And uh, but anyways, he invited me to Westside. Yeah. He's like, be there next Saturday, nine o'clock. Sure. And I'm like, fuck yeah. I was like, I'm gonna do this. I get home. Well, I actually go out. I tell my wife. My wife's in the crowd. Sure. And I tell my wife. I'm saying, hey, look, I just I just got invited to West Side. She's like, oh, bullshit. I'm yeah. like, no, swear to God. Just Which is, to by Lou. the way, like, especially from Lou, the pinnacle of right. where a power lifter gets, like, the start spot. Right. I mean, that's yep, that's yep. it. That's 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 the mecca of power lifting going there. Yeah. And, um, but anyways, like I said, it's uh, the next Saturday. We He told me to be there at 9. Yeah. And uh, me and the wife, we rolled up. We just had our newborn baby. He was about... My boy at the time, he's 24 now, so he would have been, he was like six weeks, seven weeks old at the time. Sure. And uh, me and the wife and my boy, we loaded up in the car and we took off for Columbus, which from where I live is a two-hour drive. Yeah. And it depended on traffic. I mean, it, it, an hour and 45 minutes, two hours. And um, But we got down there. It was the old one on Demarest right there in the other. Uh, so this is, where they, is that the one where they had the fucking windows all blacked yes. out and shit? Yep, windows blacked out, <laughs> pizza joint right next to it. So, and... Uh, so, anyways, we uh, we come walking up and uh, or come rolling up, I should say, and um, uh, Tom Waddle and uh, God, I'm drawing a blank on the other guys. Ramos name. mentioned his name the other day. Yeah, yeah, but actually, Tom Waddle and um, that's going to drive me nuts. I think the other dude's name. I'll think of it later in the in the cast. But anyways, they come walking out, and uh, I look at my old lady and I'm like, Chas, I was like, I cannot go in there. And she's like, what? And I was like, them motherfuckers are going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. 500, pound, 500 shirt adventure right, right, at the right, time. Right. Louie invites you in there, yeah. and you get there, and you actually kind of peed down your leg. I, I, damn near I mean, that's real talk, yeah, though. That's, that's good. That's real talk. Yeah. It, was, 
<laughs> I was I was I was getting dry heaves. Oh. And dude, I That's real. I drove away. Wow. Drove and and what year is this? 96. So, okay. Yeah, it would have been like summer 96. And um wow. cuz uh I uh, actually drove away and um 8 years took me eight years to get the nerve to call back i went home and i, I ordered the uh, the dvds I, I sent lou a money order i wasn't even dvds to, god that's old it was vhs tapes yes i ordered the, uh, I ordered the, uh, <laughs> the so west good. side bench press secrets uh, yeah vhs tapes the one where he's holding the two dogs yeah, on, so on the yeah uh, that's amazing down with the uh so with good the big, the big mustache yeah, and the, yeah, yeah the leather jacket and stuff on. so good but me and chief we watched him things religiously and uh, probably watch. I bet, I bet we watched them till we those tapes popped, and yeah. uh, we just applied everything from them videos to our bench, and our benches started going up. Louis such a G on content, bro. He was so ahead of the game. Oh yeah. I mean, just that. It, it, it's actually staggering the kind of content he was putting out back then. Oh yeah. Unbelievable. Yep, yep. So you saw what kind of raise in your bench from using conjugate and all the extra accessories. Yeah, we um, I, I got my bench up to about a six hundred shirted. Yeah. And then um. And at that time, that's a that's top. Right, 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 oh, top yeah. ten. Yep, yep, right, yep. Mike. Yeah. So it was it was good, but I mean, it still wasn't still wasn't the best. Sure. And um, believe it or not, I actually took a um a hiatus from powerlifting, and uh, I got a really good bodybuilder buddy. He was uh, two time Mister Ohio here. Okay, and, who's that? Um, Travis Brandstetter. Oh yeah, I'm not and, familiar. Uh, okay, yeah, he's uh, he's a local Columbus guy. Well, he's he's from our home area. He, okay, believe it or not, we used to skateboard together. But he went. That's the, hilarious. Uh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but he went he went the uh, the bodybuilding route, and I went the powerlifting route. Okay, but we always always stayed in touch, always stayed in contact. We always joke around still about uh, getting back on the boards. We found a ditch out off of 315. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they're they're between. Uh, 315 in the Anheuser Busch. I was like, dude, dude, we need to go hit that ditch. It's badass. That's hilarious. Like, we break our necks now, but it'd still be funny <laughs> as shit. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we, um, me and Travis, uh, we, we kind of crossed paths again and uh, really rekindled the friendship. And, okay. And um, he got me, he got me into the bodybuilding mm-hmm. scene, and I actually dieted way down. Did you almost it, do a show? I did. So I was, I was training for a show. That's cool. And um, <laughs> I had. So what's your, so your body weight from. What was it at that time I, in powerlifting? Three, about 360, and I dropped down to 215, and oh. um, I could I could see my upper abs. Um, That's yeah, crazy, so, Mike. Yeah, I could see my upper abs. Um, I was getting really really vascular, and uh, let's take this back to the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> That's amazing. I'm, I'm actually sitting in the tub. With my leg lifted up, shaving the back of my leg, my hamstring area. You know it's real then if you're a bodybuilder. (laughs) And and at that point in time, I had a damn protein shake to the left of me while I'm in the tub shaving. Yes. Because it was time to eat. And uh, I I sat there and I had an epiphany moment going, what the fuck How am, am I, I doing? doing? I've thought that of I was every like, show this, I've ever done I was like, with these hairy Italian me. legs. Oh, dude. Dude, <laughs> I just, the guy at the gym the other day, I had a, a tank top on, and he said with the hair on my back and shoulders, he goes, we could make wigs for like 20 kids <laughs> with cancer. So, <laughs> but yeah, so it was, um, that was the real life. So you think that that, though, <clears throat> period of time where you did tons of volume work probably really set you up to go, on the pursuit of what you ended up doing, which was, what was your best nine? Um, well, no. I've done 905 in 905, the gym. 905, that's right, in the gym. That's in the gym. What'd you make in the... 860 at the, at the Arnold. And at the time, that was top five. Yeah. And uh, that was that was top and five. Talk about you and your dad going to see Anthony yeah, Clark. Yeah, we... Um, Anthony Clark, for those of you that don't know, Anthony was the first guy to bench 800 pounds. And he, when I got into powerlifting, he was my idol. He's the guy. I mean, he was he was the guy that I wanted to be like. I wanted to look like him. There was him and another guy by the name of Grant Pitts. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was funny because talking about Grant Pitts, I always talked about how I always wanted to be as big or bigger than my idols. Yeah. And I put a side by side at me and Grant, Grant Pitts, Pitts together when I was I was about three forty and just jacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, holy shit! I was like, I actually got to where I wanted to be. So cool. And like I said, I mean, now being on the downslope of my career, I want to hand out to the hand yeah. it off to the kids and stuff sure. like that. But uh, back to Anthony, we um. He was uh, he was chasing 800 pounds, would have been the, the first guy ever to do it. And uh, me and my dad actually went to a couple different contests to watch him. Mm-hmm. And we actually went all the way to the um, Mr. Olympia. It was the last year it was not held in Vegas. Okay. And that was 1996 Where would it in been? Chicago. Oh, Chicago. So it was at the McCormick, right. McCormick's place in Chicago. <clears throat> 
and uh, we drove up there. And um, I'll, I'll throw an Eddie Cone story in yeah, on this please. also because it was, it was the greatest. Um, at the time, Eddie and Anthony weren't – they were having a uh, – debate back and forth in, in powerlifting usa okay and every month they'd have their 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 letters to each other that's that's how old this so is, they were guys. like feuding yeah, this, by letter this, yeah this was like they were like being pen pals through <laughs> USA. pen pal and, feuds uh, that's was, amazing there was no forms there was no text <laughs> messages there was none of that shit back then that's you so wrote, good you wrote a handwritten letter to powerlifting usa to to fight your battles that's amazing and, uh, so these two were kind of, these two were kind of feuding and um, when my son was born, my mom had a weightlifting belt that was made for, like, a baby. It yeah, was yeah. identical to mine. It had wolf engraved in the back of it, just like mine did and everything. That's cool. So I took this belt with me to the Mr. Olympia up in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I had all the bodybuilders sign it. I mean, there was, like, Laura Cravel signed it. Bingo signed it. Um, Ronnie Coleman yeah. signed it. Uh, just trying to think off the top of my head who all's in there. Um, Chris Aceto signed it. Yeah, yeah. all I mean, the top were, oh, yeah, people at the time. Tanya Knight signed it. Shout out, Tanya. You're still beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> dude, Probably said, not watching it, Mike, she, but dude, she might. maybe she, she said, might. Maybe we'll cut she, that out for you. <laughs> <laughs> she sent me a friend request the other day on Facebook. This and I had, to, I had to confirm it. Oh, dude, hey, well, we did, can make this look real good oh, if we dude, need that to happen. I had, I had the biggest crush on her back in the day, man. So, sorry, so good. Sorry, wife. I love you, baby. Yeah, so, so you're good. always my girl. You know that. <laughs> but uh, anyways, had all these guys sign this, but I saved the back of it for Anthony Clark. Sure. And um, so I was like, you know, I was going to go to the show, watch him attempt the 800 and everything. They had a little mini expo. I mean, literally nothing like the Arnold. I mean, a little yeah, mini, yeah. Mini, nothing like it is out there today. But anyways, we go, and um, I finally run into Anthony. And we, we had talked before a few times. Sure. And um, so he knew me by name, and, hey, how's it going? You know, did the bro hug stuff. And yeah, 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 I said, hey, I said, I want you to sign this for, for my boy. And uh, so he put a whole big old thing, dear Damon, eat your Gerbers and grow, blah, blah, blah. That's he just cool. wrote this whole big old message across the back of this. And um, so the show went until later that night. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my dad, you know, we was in Chicago, first time ever being there. Wanted to go get some Chicago pizza. Of course. Go up one of the scum, up top one of the uh, the big buildings and stuff, skyscrapers there. As we're walking out, I see Eddie Cone walking in. And I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, that's, this is goat, that's Eddie bro. Cone. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, one of the greatest of all time. Now the greatest of all yeah, time. Yeah, no question. And uh, so I see him like I'm walking in, and I'm like, Ed, as he's walking in, I'm like, Eddie, I was like, hey, man, I says, can I get you to autograph my, my son's belt? Mm -hmm. He's all like, oh, yeah, 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 sure, great. He goes, I'd absolutely love to. And uh, so Eddie goes, and um, I told him. Keep talking, Mike, you're good. I told him, I was like, hey, I was like, you know, I was like, I don't really have. You're fine. It's still picking you up. We just can't hear it. Now we can hear it. Go ahead. All right, sorry. You're good. Um, but I told him, I was like, hey, I said, you know, I said, I don't really have a whole lot of space on the front anymore. So, but yeah. I said, I saved the back for Anthony Clark, not thinking about their feud. I was like, could That's you just funny. sign the back of it? He takes my Sharpie marker and he writes Eddie Cone number one right over top of everything. That Anthony <laughs> Clark That's hilarious. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> dude. But, you know, what do you say? I mean, yeah. it's. I mean, he's the great, one of the legends of the sport. And he's the obviously at that point, like, heavily competitive. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's hilarious. And he walked away. Well, fast forward to 2006. Yeah. We was at the New England Record Breakers meet. It was a big raw meet up there in uh, where the uh, Minutemen play basketball at the University of Massachusetts. Oh, UMass, yeah. And uh, we're up there at UMass, and Eddie was one of the judges. Mm-hmm. And, you know, me and Eddie, we had talked a few times to some of the other meets and everything. He knew who I was because of West Side and all sure. of that. Sure. And uh, so, <laughs> anyways, I asked him, I says, hey, Eddie. I said, he come up, and he sat down beside us. And uh, I was like, hey, I said, let me ask you a question. I says, uh, I said, let's take this back. I says, 10 years ago, I said, back to the uh, the Mr. Olympia in Chicago. I said, do you remember, I says, walking into the building, I said, some young kid had a little weightlifting belt. I said, had Anthony Clark's autograph on the back of it. And I says, uh, I said, you signed to Eddie Cone number one over that whole thing. And he looks at me and he starts smirking. He goes, Wolfie, he goes, was that you? And I went, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, amazing. He remembered it oh, all, didn't yeah. he? Because he said that when he walked away, he thought to himself, he's like, God, that was a dick move. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it was cool. I mean, we laughed about it at the yeah. time. I mean, it's, but yeah, it's, uh, so yeah, it's to the whole Anthony thing we were talking about. Like I said, we was chasing him 
um, watching him go everywhere. I mean, we, me and my dad, three or four times went and watched him uh, trying to get the 800. And then finally, at the uh, the 97 Arnold Classic, he finally got the first 800 bench ever. And me and my dad, we were right in the front row. That's cool. And um, I looked at my dad. And at the time, I was benching high five shirted. Sure. And um, I look over at my dad, and I told him, I said, man, I said, that's crazy. I said, but I says 10 years. I says, I'm going to bench press that. And my old man looked at me, and he goes, that's 800 freaking pounds. Yeah. And I looked at him. I says, 10 years. I says, I will be on that stage benching over 800 pounds. Is that where you made the 860 at, Mike? Yeah. Was that so the Arnold? It was at the— That's fucking yep. sick. The two, the 2007 <laughs> Arnold. Ten so literally years, 10 years later. 10 years later to Speak the Speak it into existence, y'all. Yep. yep. So, <laughs> and, wow. Uh, I, I, got, I took second place behind Canelli. Um, yep. I'll take second. I mean, Ryan, Ryan Canelli, yeah. It's Ryan. Yeah. Ryan, Ryan's a beast. So it, um, I, uh, and that was the biggest bench Westside had ever seen. Yes. At the I time. Was, I was actually Westside's biggest. I was their first 800 bencher. Yeah. So, and then, um, I hit an 800, eight and a quarter, um, 835. You're good. 835. And then, uh, got the 860. And then I spent a year chasing 900 and I could never get it to convert over. But 905 in the gym. 905 in the gym. There's video of that. So a couple crazy. videos of that online. But um, I walked off the stage in the 07 Arnold after I did that 860. And I walked up to my dad and I smiled at him. I says, what I tell you? And he told me, he goes, you said you'd be on that stage in 10 years. My dad shook his head and smiled. He goes, it's been exactly 10 years. I That's was like, fucking yep, sick. Yep. So my dad remembered it. It was the coolest shit ever. Talk so. about, so that being said, that's a pinnacle of the career. Oh, yeah. Talk about just what weightlifting has done for you, Mike. You know, it's it's definitely, as far as me, I mean, I don't ever want to say I was an introvert. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it was there for the longest time. I mean, because as, as a skater, I mean, I had my buddies. Sure. And that's who I hung with. Yep. And it's... We was never the cool guys. We well, was, yeah, your uh, skaters weren't as cool as they are now. Uh, it was uh, outcast hell, hell back no, then. Hell no, now skaters skate everything. Everything's cool now about a skater. Yeah, so exactly. You got, you got your ass beat for wearing back then in, in the country. Back, hey, back then. then in the country, you're yeah, outcast. Yeah. So, yeah, most definitely. So, and we grew up in a small little farm town. So sure. I mean, that was that just made it tenfold then. Of course. And you know, I mean, I, I it, it's I got in plenty of fist fights as a kid. Um, God, I can remember one time I got into it, and all my buddies ran off and left me on with four dudes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, screw it, I'm gonna take an ass whooping. And um, the one dude swung at me, and I grabbed him. I, I wrestled in school, sure. So, and uh, I, I, he swung. Mm-hmm. He was drunk. I caught him in a belly to back suplex and put him head first into the concrete. Um, actually fractured the guy's skull. <laughs> Twenty. <laughs> 27 stitches dude so wow yeah yeah man it was it was crazy so so you think it brought out the 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 natural introvert it well it it's the the power lifting brought out the extroverted side okay and um and i'll tell this story because this is this is great this is one of my defining moments and this goes all the way back to like 96 and uh there was this lady in the gym, and you know what? I would go in and I trained with a chip on my shoulder. I was not—I wasn't always the nice guy I am now. Yeah, I was gonna I mean, say. Well, yeah, and I'm gonna—I'm gonna speak about. I told this to Trey. When I would watch or read or look at the West Side books, look at the pictures. Some of the scariest pictures were the ones of you. <laughs> Literally, like I remember the picture of basically with like 100 pound kettlebells and yep, you could yep. see on his forearms he's got west side tattooed and i'm looking at this dude that looks like he would literally break you in half and eat you for lunch <laughs> and then bench a thousand pounds and i was like and then when i met you in person you're the fucking nicest guy of all time i was like literally totally shocked yeah, did, but you did, like did, you said did, you weren't did, always that guy yeah that's it was again take this back 97 96 97 and um, I had this lady tell me that I was a, uh, a curmudgeon. Okay. And uh, I, had, I had to go look up what it was. I didn't know what the fuck a curmudgeon was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a, it's a mean and angry person. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, a new one. <laughs> I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, holy shit. I was like, somebody thinks I'm a mean and angry person? Sure. So anyways, um, well, I was talking about high school football yeah. and lifting weights. And there was, there, was always this, there was always this sign at the top of our weight room was up in a loft. Yeah. And when you got up there, there was this sign. It said, the only difference between a champ and a chump is you. And that, that never registered with me. I'm like, yeah, anybody that knows the alphabet knows that shit. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it never registered with me. But like I said, I always trained with this chip on my shoulder. 
and was always an ass. It was just get the fuck out of my way. I got to get my set done. I mean, that that's kind of how I trained. You were serious time. in the fucking yeah. gym. Yeah. And um, and like I said, and this this chick called me a curmudgeon. I had to go to actually pull up a dictionary to see what curmudgeon was. That's hilarious. Yeah, dictionary guys. Yeah, not, yeah. <laughs> not, not Google. Wikipedia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, anyways, went and uh, uh, looked it up, and I sat sat there and thought to myself, I'm like, am I a mean and evil person? Yeah. A mean and angry person, however it was. And uh, so, anyways, um, I was training for a contest, and it was actually at the YMCA where I had first started lifting. Okay. There was an APF meet. It was ran by Dean Glade. It was actually George Halbert's first bench press meet ever. That's which, amazing. Yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah. And uh, Lou actually lifted there. But um, I was lifting in the men's super heavyweight division, and um, I should have hit close to a 600. Mm-hmm. And I bombed. It was the <clears> first meet I ever bombed in. Which is terrible, yeah, by the terrible. way. Yeah, terrible. You miss all your lifts. You just can't. And, then yeah. you, and yeah. if you're a full meat lifter, you're just done for the yeah, day yeah, after yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so, anyways, I, I bombed. I missed all my lifts. And I sat up, and I just, after my third lift, I let out, fuck, real loud. Yeah. I mean, it just echoed in the gymnasium. I mean, everybody's just looking at me. And uh, the dude that ended up winning benched, like, it was like 380, 385, something <laughs> like that. But here's the kicker. That dude walked up to the platform, accepted his first place award, and when he turned around so the crowd could see him, he had a shirt on, said the only difference between a champ and a chump is you. That day it resonated with me. Wow. I sat there and thought, fuck, dude, yeah. I am a chump. <laughs> so, and I swore from that day I just day got beat forward, by a guy at bench 380. <laughs> <laughs> and I swore from that day forward that I would not be a chump. Yeah. I would, I would help people out. I would be – I mean, I just – and you know what I mean? I just, I, it just that that was a turning point in my weightlifting world there. Sure. To where it's like, you know what? I can do something with this. I can. I, I knew that I at that point that I wanted to go to the top of the world. I knew what I wanted to be. Sure. It was just I had to find the avenue to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then that makes sense because the way you've helped since I've met you, you know, the the meet that Jason and I did over in Canton, Mike came and lifted off and helped us out that day. The other stuff that we've done, you know, over the past, can you hook that back up, Trey? Use your other hand next time, Mike. (laughs) But it's one of those things where you've always, one, you love it. You can't even, I mean, it's, it's like all over you. You, He's always sending me pictures of new bench presses he's interested (laughs) in or what the guys are doing or asking how our guys are doing. And like that right there probably also is what, not only were you reaching the highest level, but the way that the manner that you were doing it, Mike. So the respect across the industry has always been at the highest level. Right. You know, and you commanded the respect with the numbers you're doing in the gym you did it in also. Right. Yep. And with some of the best guys that have ever even sat on a bench press. Exactly. Like George Halbert, like Jay Fry, like all those guys at Westside at the time where you were making those benches were top in, top in all oh, yeah. the weight classes, yeah. right? Every one of them were. Yeah. I mean, they were, they were just animals. I mean, George is like a 14-time all-time world record holder. I mean, that's Jay. I mean, Jay's still one of the top all-time yeah. world records. I remember watching Jay. I said this in, when we were talking to Ramos. I remember watching him do like a 760, 770, like two board. Yeah. It, it was just so technical in the Ray Jack shirt. Yep. It was unbelievable, Mike. Yeah, he um, when he was doing that, and uh, I was talking to him, asking how it felt, and he goes, he told, he told me. His bones are I bending. Did he say bones, that? I yeah, know. He told I me that. I feel my bones too. flexing. I was like, dude, that is insane. Yeah, because he's not a very so, big guy. No, he's not. He's a 181 or 198 er. Yeah. So, and, and his uh, technique was serious. Oh, his technique was flawless. That's cool. And, uh, Jay was a great guy. So, did you? You never moved to Columbus. You just always I came. Didn't. Came on. Yeah, did you come Sunday, twice a week? Nope, just always morning, Sundays. Sunday mornings. So you drove down all these years. Yep. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Wow. And, uh, yeah. It. Um. We we looked, but the the job market yeah. at the time. Uh, me and my wife, my wife both have really, really good jobs. Sure. And, where you guys uh, live. Um, yeah, and yeah. Where we live at. We have yep. great jobs. I drive three minutes to work. So. Yeah. So you'd rather drive once yeah. to the gym a right, couple right, hours. Right, right, Talk about the intensity you learn from being in an environment like that, Mike. Because obviously you, you trained with a chip on your shoulder. Yep. You're a fucking strong, tough guy. But talk about that next level turn up when you walk inside of Westside Barbo. And, and you're one of the players there. Yep. yep. Well, let's uh, – Let's take it back to where I drove away. Yeah, no, please. That'd yeah, be great. It's uh, drove away eight years, eight years. I uh, It took me to, to call, go back. And, yeah. Um, I actually called I actually called Lou up on um, just to kind of chit-chat about some, some technique stuff. Yeah. And um, Doris answered the phone, 
And uh, I talked to Doris for a little bit. She's like, well, I'll have Lou call you back. Well, about an hour later, Doris calls me back. Mm -hmm. And first words out of her mouth, she goes, Lou wants to know where the fuck you were eight years ago. And he and, didn't. Uh, for, he yeah. didn't fucking forget yeah. it. That's so, amazing. So uh, I told her, I was like, well, you know, I was like, I'm gonna be honest. This, I got scared and I drove away. And she kind of laughed. She said, Well, Lou said to have your ass down here Saturday at nine. So here we go. Back Put up or shut circle. up, motherfucker. Yeah. So, so anyways, I, I get in the car and that Saturday morning, and I drive down there, and I get to about Marysville there on uh, Route 33, sure. and I can <clears> I can feel the heaves coming, the dry heaves. I can feel the nausea. What do you think you're so anxious about, Mike? I don't know. I mean, it. it you know what? I mean, that's that's the mecca. I mean, yeah. that's, like I said, that's the uh, the guys that I mean at the time that you aspired to yeah, always look I mean, like that's or where be I like to be. Um, walk in and and Lou was there, and uh, the first training group that I got to train with was um, Amy Weisberger and JL Holdsworth. Oh, JL's and, cool. You know what I mean? And, and, that's someone else I need to have oh, on. Yeah, he's oh yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's awesome. Great, smart, smart. Yeah, guy, smart guy. Smart. But um, JL and Amy were the first crew that I, their their crew, and you know what I mean. And you, you Amy's got, in everyone's stories. Oh yeah, Amy's awesome. <laughs> Amy is amazing. Amy's in everybody's yeah, stories. Amy is Mike. so amazing. I love her. <laughs> She's awesome. So, Amy, if you listen to this, you're awesome. Yeah. So, but um, anyways, uh, trained with them, and um, you know Chuck was always back in the corner. Okay. Um, know who Chuck? Those of you don't know Chuck, one of the most intense guys ever. Chuck Vogelpool. Yeah, Chuck V. And, um, you know, I mean, so he was always kind of back there and got a watchful eye on us and yeah. everything. And um, it, it was it was good. And, I mean, I got – I mean, I those guys were actually doing more of a speed day. Okay. And Lou was kind of having me do mm -hmm. a um, do a heavy day. Mm -hmm. And I had about a 585 raw at the time. And Lou told me, he's like, I don't have anybody benching that raw right now. He goes, none of my supers could even touch that. And he goes, if you learn a shirt, he goes, you'll be my first 800-pound bencher. He knew it right and, there. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, so – um, I, I trained and I, I like to say that Lou kind of kept me hush hush for a while. Sure. But after doing a podcast with Bill Crawford and the metal militia, yeah. Bill goes, Mike, he goes, we knew you were coming. Yeah. He goes, Lou was up in our ear all the time saying Mike did this. Mike did that. He goes, yeah, never been on. He hadn't been on the platform as a, as sure. a pro. He goes, but, but he knew, knew he was we, coming. We knew you was coming. And, uh, so anyways, we, um, that, like I said, the first three or four months was great. Sure. And then the intensity kicked in because that was the one day that I walk in and the only person in there is Chuck. <laughs> and there is, there is a big powerlifting meet over in, uh, what is it, Zanesville? Yep, yep. Um, There's a big powerlifting meet over in Zanesville. So everybody else had went to Zanesville except for me and Chuck. And so it's just you yeah, training it's with just Chuck. me and Chuck. And, and I'm, I'm sitting there. I'd get there about 20 minutes early. Sure. And um, Chuck was already in there, had the music blaring. And he's just sitting on the bench, and um, his leg's going 100 mile an hour. I mean, he's like a, like yeah. a spring getting ready to pop. And at 9 o'clock, he looks at me, and he goes, you ready? I went, yeah. I said, where's everybody else? He goes, just me and you. And I swear to this day, <laughs> he tried to break me. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, he drove me and drove me and drove me. Um, had me doing JM presses with 405, and uh, it, it was the craziest thing ever. He's like, those arms, he goes, you should be able to do 405. And, I mean, by the time we were, I mean, getting done with our sets, I'm against the wall. It's mid-August. It's just, I'm, I mean, I'm a sweaty mess. I mean, I'm sitting here now sweating. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. That hot box <laughs> yeah. sweating. And, uh, I mean, he just And being pushed by one of the oh, most yeah. intense motherfuckers exactly. to ever walk on the platform. I mean, it was literally, he went, I went. He went, I went. I mean, there was no rest in between. And uh, it got to be about, it was about quarter after 10, 1030. Yeah. Uh, a couple other guys walked in, and uh, they was over in the back corner talking, and uh, Chuck kind of went over and was chatting with them, and uh, they were they were actually getting ready to do like some speed squats and deadlifts. Sure. And, and Chuck looks back over his shoulder and he goes, "Hey Wolf," he goes, "You squatting deadlift yet this week?" And I says, "No." Nope. And he goes, "You will before you leave." And he turned his he turned back away from me. I grabbed my shit and I left. Took off <laughs> <the door. laughs> you knew you were gonna get broken if you did that. Right. So uh, I walk in the next Saturday, and he's just <laughs> laughing. And he goes, I didn't think you'd be back. I was like, man, I was like, you drove my balls in the ground. and said, but you didn't break me. That's all. And, that, but uh, that seems to be oh, the yeah. theme, though, right? Oh, yeah. So um, that carried over to the very next weekend. I had come down on that Saturday like normal. And uh, George Halbert, Tony Ramos, Paul Key, Drex mm -hmm. Welch were all in the back left yep. corner. And um, like I said, I got there early. It was about 830. And. 
and I just sat down on a folding chair right there by the front door. And I mean, I knew I knew who uh, George was. I mean, yeah. obviously, like I said, fourteen time world record, world yeah. record holder. He's on the cover of Powerlifting uh, USA. Yeah, yeah. All the times. So, and uh, so I sat there and kind of watched. I watched him mm-hmm. and watched the guys what they were doing. And uh, a couple minutes later, Lou walks in. And Lou kind of taps me. He's like, "That's who the fuck you need to be training with." And I looked at him and I said, what do you mean? And he goes, well, he goes, that's a Saturday or a Sunday morning bench career. He's like, you need to be training with those guys. He goes, you want to bench big? So Lou brought me over and introduced yeah, me to D- him. Yeah, because Tony was a bench only guy then, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and, um, so Lou, brought me, Lou brought me over and uh, he introduced me to all of them and, and they let me work in with them. And, um, and that was my, my first experience, not only with George, but with Tony. Um, y'all probably heard Tony <laughs> the, the podcast before. Yeah. Um, if you walk, he's into, a fucking you know, legend, bro. Jesus Christ. If you, if you walked into West side and you had any kind of an ego, he chased your ass out the door and down the railroad. Track yeah. Because he put ego. it on you. Wouldn't he? Oh yeah, dude. It, he makes so many damn fat jokes to me. It's, it makes me <laughs> guy cry. If, if I miss something, I don't get a donut. If I miss something, oh. I don't get a Twinkie. <laughs> fucking asshole yeah I love, him. <laughs> love him like a brother i do man he's that's, the greatest that's so good so, but uh anyways that was the the first time that i got to lift with those guys and it was intense don't get me yeah. wrong but it was also tony bringing his bringing the shit yep and he's uh, testing and, yeah oh yeah and and george george had just gotten out of the hospital that week he'd been in the hospital for like three days like a bad flu bug and um i ended up beating george by like 80 pounds and Tony is just riding yeah, George. Oh my God! Oh. He's like, <laughs> Tony, I'll, I'll never forget it because he's like, oh, he's like, new guys on the bus. He's like, <laughs> George's ass is off the bus. New guys leaving him in the dust. And I mean, just I can just see it, just riding him. It. And, and George is the world record holder oh, at the yeah. time. Oh yeah, <laughs> and uh, just, just, just laying it on thick. Yeah, and I, I'm sitting here, and I'm like, "Motherfucker, shut up!" Yeah, you're like, I'm I was the- like, I want to be accepted into this crew here. <laughs> yeah, and um, but anyways, I mean, later to come to find out, that's just how Tony is. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, that's it, it was it was George invited me back the next week. Yep, and that's why. I said, well, well, that's probably perfect for George. Exactly what he oh, needed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I asked him. I said, "Well, this is well, what time you guys train?" Yeah, and he told me he he said six thirty, and I'm like, "Fuck." 6 30 on a sunday morning yeah he's an early riser yeah and me and my wife y'all don't need to understand we got married at 19 yeah and we started having babies yep we didn't have them college years so as we got into our later 20s as our kids got a little bit older and they wouldn't always want to go to grandma's for overnight stay you guys is partying we was getting into our party yeah yeah <laughs> so right. and uh, i mean it's saturday nights was our night to go out and i mean that's and so what, now you got to close yeah, that down so you yeah, can go to the gym so, so i i go home and I tell my tell my wife about this great opportunity that I have. Yeah. And but I mean, I had to tell her. I was like, look, I was like Saturday nights. We better are, start partying on gone. Friday. Well, she looked at me and she goes, "Is that what you want?" And I said, "Well, I says I want to want to make sure you're cool with it." Yeah. And she's like, "Well, she goes, if you want to be the best, she goes, that's what you got to do, right?" And I said, "Yeah." She awesome goes, well, support. I support it. My wife, dude, she's been my support from day one in this. I so mean, day key. one. She's been with me since day one. I mean, yeah. we've been dating since we were 17. Wow. So 16 That's and cool, 17, Mike. I mean, yeah. we were dating. And uh, so she's been around since day one. She knew me during my skater years. So, so good. I still I still get the old skater boy shit from her every once yeah. in a while. And uh, I'll, I'll get all excited. I'll, we'll be we'll be going somewhere, and I'll hear a pop, somebody doing ollie or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll turn, and I'll look. She'll be like, hey, damn skater fags. Yeah. So she gives she gives me the shit. So. Yeah. But, uh, but anyways um, – uh, like I said, she she was super cool with it. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, "We'll just go out on Friday," and uh, so we turned our party night to Friday night. That's cool. And Saturday nights, I was in bed by eight thirty, and I mean, and that's that's been, I mean, it was something that I had to give up, mm-hmm. but I knew that it would take me to the top. Hell and yeah. within within eleven months of me being at Westside, I was I was a top five bencher in the world. That's so great. talk talk about for people watching right now, Mike. Top maybe five things that you knew heavily impacted your bench, whether it's board presses or tricep work or like, tell, talk to me about a few things that were staples in your, in your training. Um, I'm going to tell you the top two tricep work like crazy, heavy, 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 and then back and trap work. That's, that's, that's it. where the support's at. And you it? got, you got to build that foundation. I mean, mm-hmm. people always think, Oh, bench press, bench press, bench press. 
And it's not all about the bench press itself. I mean, no. or you, the chest. Even. You would you would never build a house on an unstable foundation. Yeah. And that's the, that's how you have to look at your bench press when you set up. You got to have that foundation to bench off of. Yep. So I mean, I I trained my back heavy twice a week. Yep. And I mean, you know, I mean, it, it was just it was something that I mean, I I had actually got that from from some of the West Side videos, and I mean, and that was something that that all the way back to the '90s with Chief. I mean, that yeah. was something that he said. You got. That's train just a raw your back. bencher too. I mean, yeah, you have yeah. to have a well, so, and George trains mostly like a bodybuilder yes. too other than a lot of his speed work right. and his i mean he did tons crazy, of back and rear delt work speed, crazy speed Cra no. the um you think that um being in that environment what i found when i would be there just a few times i trained there like you're so much more willing to hang yourself out oh, to the fucking gotcha out to the fucking you know to the hospital yeah. oh, like yeah. on a regular basis yeah. and and but that's how you break those levels of strength you know when i would come up there i had trained all week i'd come on sunday and then you guys are pushing me to take 450 470 and i think i might even took 491 right before that meet you helped me at and it's like you don't think you're gonna do that going up to that and i'm already in an intense crew in my guys but you go there and it's like i remember bob co said to me the second or third time I was ever there with Tim Harold took me. Oh, yeah. And I was getting ready to take my first maybe 600 or six-something squat. And he looked at me, and I had I had kind of fucked up the set before. He's like, you're a fucking West Side motherfucker. Like, like basically, wild. where the fuck's your head at? That's you know what wild. I mean? And I thought to myself, holy shit, like, this is the shit I've been reading about. This, this is that now you make that weight, even though it's nothing crazy compared to what was going on. But for me at that time... Yeah. That was that was huge, and that I could actually maybe beat Amy at that point, right? <laughs> maybe, but that was the, the, I like the test of then walking up, smoking it, and then him knowing that you responded. I think that's with those guys. Yeah. No matter what the weight is, yep. when you know it's right on that edge, and you're willing to go there, that's why Tony yeah. Tony Ramos, you know, starts to get the respect. And is that does that oh, sound yeah. about oh, right? Yeah. That's I mean, that that's exactly how it is. Yeah. I mean, when you walk in there, I mean. You know, I mean, well, one, the slightest fuck up, you're going to the hospital. No question. So, I mean, because the, the amount of weight. But you better be bringing 110% intensity. Yeah. I mean, and, and I'm the kind of guy, you know, I'm pretty laid back, calm, cool, collective. But when I flip the lever on my belt, yeah, I go into a dark spot. Yeah, fuck, you got I mean, to. And it's, you're taking 800 it's, over yeah, your face, bro. It's a, it's a fuck it all or nothing. I mean, yep. And try, I mean, there's been days I've walked out of there where I thought I was hurt. Yep. And I mean, granted, I mean, up until just here recently, the last few years, I mean, I've been competing at that level with no major injuries for a I long mean, some time. Strains and sprains, and I mean, finally after 40 years old, I mean, yep. the body's kind of like, hey, jackass, time to time to yeah. put it put it in the uh, into a lower gear here. Sure. But yeah, I mean, you go in there, and I mean, you train, you give 110 percent. I mean, there, there's been times where I've been driving home and I've had to pull over and take a nap. Yeah. Because, I mean, I was just so wore out. And and that's after having a good night's sleep. And that's where so. people don't look. The environment, the methodology, the yep. training part. It's like that's why West Side is West Side yep. and why it's in, in the myth of it. And now it's not as, I guess, mythical because of social media and those type of things. But still going through all of these things you've talked about. I mean, that's that's why people it's so sought after. Yep. It's like I said, if, if I've had people at work, I mean, because it's I work in I work in the safety field mm -hmm. and um, I'm in manufacturing safety. So I have to make sure everything's OSHA compliant, that kind of stuff. And I mean, there's days that I hobble at work. Yeah. And, and I have people ask me, they're like, hey, man, it's like if you go back and change it, would you change it? Fuck no. I wouldn't I wouldn't change it the least bit. I mean. Because it, it was something that I knew that I wanted to accomplish. Did I, did I beat my body up for a plastic trophy and, you know what, some a little bit of respect? Yeah, but you know what? It was what I wanted. It was the it was the level of what I wanted, and I knew the intensity that I had to bring, and I brought it. Yeah, and, uh, and so, you know, you don't look back at all. No, not at all. You so. know, that's the one thing I respected about watching the Ronnie Coleman documentary. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, yeah. He's oh, pretty yeah. fucked up right Fuck now. Yeah, he is. So and he I said. I cried watching that because Ronnie was one of my favorite bodybuilders. So. Yeah, and I, and I was, you know, definitely like within supplements and all during that time. And I was like, and he doesn't fucking, he does it. I mean, he's got double walker, bro, yeah. at this point. I yeah. saw him at, I was at Venice during Christmas and saw him training. And it's hard to watch, especially oh, yeah. in person. Oh yeah. And and then you think, 
He fucking gave it everything he had, bro. His only regret was that he didn't get three reps with 800. I know. Ain't that fucking crazy? <laughs> Which is like a true power lifter socket. I mean, in the amount of weight he was moving, exactly. in the amount of mass he had, yep. to be in, what, 300 pounds lean, yeah. it, it's a, there's a respect to the crazy side of it. I'll, t- I'll tell you a funny Ronnie Coleman story. Mm-hmm. And um, this is this is the first year that he won the Mr. Olympia. And um, we was at the Arnold, and we mm-hmm. come through. And um, Billy Blanks' tie bow was like the big thing at the time. So funny. And, and Ronnie Coleman's booth was right across from the tie bow booth. Yes. And I come around the corner, and there was literally nobody in line to see Ronnie Coleman. But a, probably a bazillion people were ready there, to see yeah, Billy Blanks. There was probably 300 people standing in front of the Billy Blanks booth watching him do his thing. And Ronnie's wow. sitting there with his arms crossed, just like this big giant gorilla with these sunglasses yeah. on and I come walking up to him, and I'm like, what's up, Ronnie? He's like, hey. And I was like, uh, I says, Ty Bo? And he's like, yeah. And, I mean, you just see he was annoying. <laughs> fucking pissed. And I looked at him, and I kind of <laughs> smirked, and I says, uh, I said, you want to go over and join me in it? And then he kind of chuckled. He's like, no, nah, man, I'm good. And I was like, hey, it's congratulations. I mean, When cardio of, kickboxing yeah, is exactly, basically whooping exactly your ass, right. you're pissed. <laughs> So uh, we, we sat there for probably 10, 15 minutes and just, just chilled, shot the shit. So. I, I, I got a lot of respect from watching yeah. that about yeah. him, about how he yep. was all in, yep. Yep. not no regrets. Yeah. And it's a legacy, man. Oh, yeah. You took it to the absolute top. Yep, yep. So most definitely. That's so cool. So, yeah, that's uh, good stuff. I mean, that's that's one and only time I've ever talked to him. But yeah. it was. I mean, he was always one of my favorites. So, I guess I guess I kind of hollered at him one time a couple years prior to that, and he had the biggest glutes I'd ever seen on a bodybuilder in my life. Literally looked like you could take a knife over there and just shoot yeah, the yeah. steak off of it. So, but I hollered out to him one time just to see if he'd turn around. And yeah, yeah. He turned around and waved. That's you know, funny. I'm, I'm a young dumb kid coming up through the bodybuilding sure. powerlifting world, and uh, I thought that it was the coolest thing. I'm like, ah, oh, Ronnie Coleman turned around, and said hi. So, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's good stuff. So, talk to me about being on the cover of Powerlifting USA, Mike. What that meant to you? Oh my God, dude! Because <laughs> <That was laughs> we've both been on the cover yeah. of magazines, yes, for yes, different reasons. Yes, I. I but but it's a I it's a crazy clo- experience, right? On. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, PLUSA. Um, uh, that, at the time, that was that was the biggest powerlifting magazine. I mean, it actually, it was the only. Well, I would magazine. say it's the only, and it's and it would always be the biggest ever. Yes. Like it, it was just the yep. the it, it was what started it, it all. It ran thirty forty years, yeah. however long, and and that was how we always we didn't have the internet back then. So That's I mean, how you was, knew what people did yeah, at meets, right? Yeah. You, you grabbed the back of it, seen what the meat results were. Yeah. I mean, just all kinds of, I mean, that was where you got your information. Sure. At. Louie always had an article in there. It was awesome. And uh, so, I mean, there was just so much powerlifting information. I mean, that was kind of like our Bible that we got yeah. every month. And, and, uh, I and had, you probably couldn't fucking wait to get oh, it. I'm oh, like, yeah, I mean, every month. And, and I had, like I said, I had my own, had my own subscription to it sure so every month that it would come and then when my subscription run out i'd be like shit gotta send money yeah and um but anyways we uh we was at the 06 apf state championships here in ohio okay um actually let me take that back it was actually a national meet it was um it was here like i said it was here in columbus well we're in granville but it was in columbus yeah. ohio and um it was uh, uh, I don't remember his APF UPA one one of the two I don't remember exactly which one. Um, Kenny Patterson was the meat director. Okay. And uh, Kenny had actually taken over the UPA, so I don't remember if it was when. APF UPA. He was doing both <clears> at the <throat> time. But anyways, um, there was so much crap talk on online going into that meet. Fun, just banner back sure. and forth. And um, they were giving away this big ring and everything for the pound for pound best lifter, but I didn't care pound for pound. I just wanted the biggest bench. Sure. Um, long story short, I had um, missed my first two attempts, and um, I was I was like I said not in a good place mentally, and I just I mean I was just I just want to get this meat done, get out of here, and um, I had went eight thirty five eight thirty five miss miss actually I didn't take that back I went eight thirty eight thirty miss miss. And um, I was like, the the guy that I was competing against went 830, and he got it. Okay. And um, so I, I called for 835. And um, George was like, well, he goes, y- you sure you want to do that or you want to go 830? And I was like, no, I'm going for the win. 
I was like, I want eight. Fuck it, you're you're zero and two. You might as well go for the one to make it happen. So I'm going. I'm going for the win, and um, I hate to be physically slapped. I hate to be smacked in the head. I just I love to slap the shit out of people. I got handfuls of motivation, but I hate it. And those guys set up a gauntlet line <laughs> coming out of the back room. So I mean, good. it was Ramos, it was Drex, it was George. I mean, so all good. of the guys. I mean, Jay Fry was in there. They got you uh, fired oh up. Oh, my God, dude. I, I have never been slapped in the face, the back of the head, the chest, the shoulders. Um, I think Bobby Coe might have even slapped the shit out yeah. of me going out there. But they had me so pissed off. All I wanted to do at that point in time was fight. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I uh, I get up there, and I smoked it. Smoked it. Launched it. I mean, hit everything perfect. Launched it. Threw it back in the rack. And I come up off that bench. My glasses are flying off my face. And I'm pointing at the ground, and I just scream at the top of my lungs, this is my fucking house. Love and, it. And um, – uh, a, a guy in the crowd snapped a picture and he caught the intensity. Is that the one that was on? Yeah, that's he, he caught the intensity of it and um, he submitted the picture. I didn't even know he submitted it. That's a and, fucking um, great story, he, Mike. He submitted the picture and uh, and, and I, had already, I had already done an interview with them. Sure. And uh, they had sent me, they, it was like a five or six page spread. So they, they could were, match it up with yeah. that. And um, but, uh. but Scott, um, Scott Ritzler was the guy's name. He, uh, he sent the picture in and um, with a bunch of other ones that he'd taken from the meet. And uh, my subscription had run out. I didn't renew my subscription at that point in time. You're on and, the cover, yeah, but your subscription yeah, yeah, ran yeah. out. I mean, I'm, still, I'm, still, I'm still buying them. I'm still buying them. <laughs> but um, my dude. That's amazing. My dude, Bear, he, he, he shoots me a call. And he's like, bro. And uh, he's like, you're on the cover of PLUSA. And I'm like, oh, no shit. I was like, small picture. And he's like, no, dude. He goes, the whole fucking cover. So dope, and bro. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, the whole cover. He goes, you're on the whole cover. Just you. And I said, well, what picture? And he says, the one of you coming off the bench. He goes, where you screaming? This is my fucking house. But the catchphrase on the bottom of it, it says a visit to Wolf's house. That was the, that was yes. the catchphrase on the bottom. That's so, so good, that, Mike. That carried over into the, uh, into the uh, actual interview and uh, the six-page spread with a ton of other very intense pitchers. And um, that's so they cool. Actually, and the, the cool thing about it, it was later on, I don't remember if it was on Powerlifting Watch or one, one of the websites, yeah. they actually did the, um, the most intense cover of Powerlifting USA, and I ended up winning it. They said yes. that, that was dubbed the, the most intense cover of Because they actually say. caught the emotion, caught the emotion of you missing to yeah. having your training partners fire yeah, you yeah. up and then you making a PR at the yeah. time, right? My glasses flying off my face is the funniest shit, man. And That's me so point, cool, me Wolf. At the ground, so That's it, so um, cool. But now, now the funniest part about that picture, because uh, uh, Ramos, like I said, I can never get anything over top of him. Of course. And I, I, I'm going to tell this because it's just funny as shit. And, um, but we ended up – Ended up taking that picture and photoshopped the big penis on me. And, <laughs> and, yes, and, of course. And, and Ramos's head behind my hand. And, <laughs> and, 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 and we were we were going to a meet. We were going up to meet up north. And um, that's I had so that, fucking I, oh, good. Dude, I had that picture in my pocket, and um, I was passing it around. And I handed it to Lou, and poor Lou was laughing so hard he about fell off his damn chair. So good. And finally, after about a half hour, Ramos comes up, and he's like, all right, motherfucker. He goes, let me see it. And I'm like, what? And he's like, let me see it. And I'm like, I was like, I ain't got anything. And he's like, I know you got something in your pocket. So, so I, good. I, I pull it out, and I hand it to him. And I've never seen him at a loss for words. Until That's that so day. fucking good. He bro. just he just drops his head, hands it back to me, walks away. That was one time I got him. And then uh, uh, I'm glad that they're gonna uh, know who Tony oh, yeah, is before yeah, yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is gonna make yeah. it so good. So then, then um, uh, another lifter, West Side guy. He used to actually ride down with me, um, John Martinez. He okay. actually he actually lived an hour north of me. He would okay. come to me, and we would <clears throat> carpool down. He'd come to me, and then we would carpool down. Okay. And, um, but anyways, um, the flex magazine came in and they did an article on West side barbell 
and they have all of the guys. When was that, like 2008? Yeah, something like that. I think that's the one that turned me on to everything. Yeah. So I had saw those guys when I was younger. That came out in Flex Magazine. I still have it at my house. Do you? And I, it had the splits of the conjugate. Yep, yep, yep. And I, I read it, and I was like, holy fuck, this is what I need to do. And these guys are all here, and that's yeah. what started West Side for yep. me. Well, they had, they had all the guys take their shirts off and kind of do like a, like a pose, yeah, like yeah, a yeah. building pose. And um, so anyways, uh, old Ramos, he comes in, and he didn't know that we knew about it. And like I said, I, I still read bodybuilding magazines. Sure. I followed it. And um, I had the magazine in my, in my uh, gym bag. And uh, so anyways, Ramos comes in there running his mouth. And uh, I just kind of looked at him and I says, you know what? I says, why don't you just shut up today, Flex? I says, I don't want to hear your shit. And he turns, he looks at me, he goes, what'd you say? And I says, oh, yeah. I says, trust me. I says, I know. I said, what do you do? I said, you got a Speedo in there? I said, what's the <laughs> <laughs> so, so start start ripping on him about that. Well, he was getting ready to do a meet, and it was probably about three weeks out. And Martinez took that picture and put it into like a three-way split on the front of a shirt with him <laughs> on it. And on the back of it, it said, Flex Ramos is numero uno. Yes. We <laughs> me, me, John. We called him Dirty. Dirty was his nickname. Yeah. Dirty Martinez. And uh, but great was, nickname. Yeah, no great nickname, <laughs> right? So it was me, Dirty, and Tony's oldest daughter. What is it, Shay? I think. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, the three of us had those shirts on. So and, good. And we're we're sitting in the, we're sitting in the uh, the front row of the meet. Yeah. And Shay goes to the back, and I hear Ramos, Wolf. Wolf, yeah. you motherfucker! Uh, at so the top good. of his lungs, and we did. We laughed and laughed. He come out. And he's just he's just looking at us, just shaking his head. So still to this day, every once in a while, I'll throw a flex. That's Ramos fucking out good, bro. So good shit, good good shit, right there. So uh, sum it up for West Side. What's West Side mean to Mike Wolf? What does West Side mean to me? Um, it means everything. Honestly, everything. You don't look yeah. one day and see those tattoos, not wish they weren't nope. a little bit. You don't wish they were any smaller. I know that. I wish they were right? bigger. Yeah, <laughs> I knew that. that's what I was. That's what I was trying to get out. It really, it is. It, it changed your life probably so yes. much, right, Mike? Um, I walked away from West Side um, twice. First time was to do to just I was, I you know I I let myself get way too big. Mm-hmm. Um, I got way out of shape. <laughs> not, not that I'm in shape now, but, but you're uh, working on it right now too. What's that? You're working on it right yeah, now yeah, too. Yeah, I'm actually down 30. So good for you, man. But um, I was starting to run into some some pretty serious health issues, mm-hmm. and I just I had to I had to get away from it for a while. So um, I walked away, and I dieted way down, way way down. Got down about 240, mm-hmm. 245, and then ultimately I come back to powerlifting, and then um, uh, ended up. I left again for, I don't know, about a year and a half or so. Um, ended up having to have some knee surgeries. Yep. Um, had a full knee replacement and all of that stuff. And um, ended up, uh, it would, this would have been 2017, I had the knee replacement. Um, 2018, I got cleared to come back to lifting. And I was like, you know, I was like, I'm, I'm going full in, all out. And, so um, that must have been when I ran into you. Yes. When I started was, coming yeah, on Sundays. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's when we first met. And because uh, I was getting ready to go to Florida for nationals, yep, yep. And uh, we took off, took off for Florida, and I trained my ass off for about three months, four months, and uh, went down there and I bombed. I was, I was, I am the WP still right now WPC world record holder in the men's open division. Yeah, um, I'm the only American left on the left on the uh, record board. Wow. Everybody else is like Hungary and and Russia and all of that stuff. And um, but anyways, we uh, we go and. Uh, uh, get back like I ended up bombing so yeah. had it had a shitty shitty me and I get back and dude I just went all in I mean I I went, became a recluse yeah and I, I just I, I quit training quit training hard um actually was suffering depression I mean it, it, it got bad dude I was in a bad bad spot sure and um the west side versus the world video came out and uh me and the wife we sat there and watched it it was when it when it released a digital sure and me and the wife sat there and watched it and i laughed and i cried and i laughed and i cried and, and when it was all said and done i just kind of sat there i mean had tears going down the eyes and um i looked over at my wife and her exact words she's like go she goes 
That's, you just knew that's yeah. where you need to Dude, be. I mean, I'm getting emotional yeah. sitting here. And uh, she's like, that's where your fucking happiness is. She's like, get back in your groove. That's find cool. your gusto. She goes and go. And um, that next day, I had a day off work. And uh, I called Lou. And I talked to Lou on the phone for like 45 minutes. Yeah. And I was like, I, I need to be there. Sure. I was like, this, it's is, you. this is what I need. This is Even if I'm not lifting, even if I'm just in the environment to help out. Oh, bro. I mean, which is where I'm at now with the... Is suffering with the shoulder injury sure. right now, so I mean, I'm just there helping out. I mean, I'm, sure. not, I'm not doing shit. But that's I mean, part of how all the right. old lifters have done. They, that's how you pass it down to the exactly. next. That's that's how you push, yep. and that's what Tony always talks about: is keeping that intensity in that yep. gym, yep. the next generation. Yep. And then if you can pull, look, Lou was pulling half meets together till he was sixty something. Right, right, right. You get a healthy streak, yep. you're gonna be right back up on there. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Hey, when the bug yeah. bites you for real, oh, yeah. I got it, bro. It's I like you know. can't oh, get rid yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> It's I'll, I'll do this I'll do this till the day I die. Like I said, it'd be people ask me all the time, "Do you regret it?" And fuck no. No. I I'm never gonna. I've thought that I quit three times, and I can't. You it, it's I'm not mentally happy unless one I'm in that gym, two I'm lifting heavy shit, and uh, I I got a that, bro. rotator and labrum and the super spinatus thing. Super going spinatus, on. Yeah, I got that spinatus. one. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> that's I got all that going on right now. I'm going to get an MRI when we're done with this. I got yeah. my MRI. And, um, but my doctor's almost positive. It's all, all shit. Yeah. And, um, and I'm still doing a meet July 25th. And so, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like, fuck it. I mean, what, everything, uh, everything that comes from West side, anybody that's a, there's just a screw loose little, of so. that. They love the sport or of lifting in general to right, the, right. to the highest level, the mental, the, the mental aspect, bro, of – and that's where I learned it is from being around you guys is that I was already – I'm wired crazy in my own way. Right. That's a fact. But being around Tony, being around George, being around yourself, being in that environment, seeing what I needed to then take back to my gym to right. expect. You know what I mean? And then trying to show those guys how to do that and then us doing it in our way, that changed everything for me. We already kind of – like my high school – luckily my high school strength coach showed us some great intensity – but then when you see it at a professional level and you see it at the best in the world level, that's what a lot of people don't realize. When I moved to Columbus, I didn't know fucking Westside Barbell was here. I didn't know the Arnold Classic was here. I didn't know any of that. I just knew there was a one-year program at Columbus State. Maybe I could get out of the coal mine and be a fucking personal trainer one day. All of this other stuff was on accident, right. but not on accident. Right. And then once I was around it, I knew exactly where my spot would be, essentially, in this world. You know what I mean? And that's why, like, even though I was never a full member or ever up there for any longer periods of probably than two or three months at a time, the amount of stuff that I grabbed from there and been able to apply in my own way and the relationships I've created, it's everything, bro. Yep. It's, it's been, it's been massive. Yep. And that's, it, it's, it's a brotherhood to me. For sure. I mean, it's, you know I mean? There, there's multiple crews. I mean, there's multiple there's, generations of guys too. Oh yeah. Multiple now. generations in there. And it's, you know, I mean, we may not all be friends, but we're all in the same gym. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's, that's, I mean, we know when we go to the meets, yep. I mean, whether I train with those guys or not, I'm supporting those guys. No question. That's, that's part of our gym. They may not, may not be my crew. Yeah. But I mean, my crew is the Sunday morning bench crew. Doesn't I mean, matter. Yeah. I mean, and then you got the older guy crew, you got the AM crew. I mean, we did have the PM crew. Yeah. So, I mean, was, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're not going to go there. Yeah. There, yeah. <laughs> but, uh. So like but I even said, like when we did that meet at Lexington where I wasn't getting no love at all. It was right. bad. Oh, yeah. But there was guys from the Sunday crew there. Tony was there helping me. Everyone just puts their arms around you like you are West Side. If they're if you're fucking with guys from West Side or you've been around enough and you're there competing, that was another part of the reason why. And even big Josh walk uh, Josh yeah, uh, yeah Connolly walked yeah. in. He helped like it was like one of those things where that was one of the times I got to really experience that outside of you and Tony and George, that because that was just happening, everyone was just showing love right. and right. it, and it was cool. Yep. And then we drank beer after. Absolutely. And during, I think, <laughs> I think, I think like after my second bench, you were drinking beer in the back room. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. I, I, I had to slow down that day. I had to drive home. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah. Good shit. Damn, good shit. Mike. I really appreciate you coming out, bro. Oh, yeah. So fun. fun. We'll do it again. Yep. The uh, where can everybody find you at, Mike? Uh, you know, I mean, you can find me on online. IG. So I mean, you can get to uh, my IG is at Big Bad Wolf nine hundred, and uh, my Facebook. I mean, just look up Mike Wolf, and uh, it's it's. I'm trying to think what my background picture is right now. So I mean, just this <laughs> oh, find picture of me and my wife. 
Look, look for the fat guy and the hot chick. This so. fucking guy. <laughs> so, pro power lifter, 865. 860. 860-pound bencher. 650 raw. 650 raw. OG. Which was my opener. Which Oh, so yeah. that was your opener that yeah, day? I was supposed to, I was smuck, supposed to smoke 700 raw that day. Wow. And um, missed, uh, ended up, um, I, I owned my own gym at the time, and I tried to pull a, a leg sled that kept slamming into the wall, and it had, it had four 100-pound plates, and I was too lazy to unload the 100-pound plates, so I tried to pull it out away from the wall with the plates on it and ended up pulling my left quad <laughs> the week of the meet. So I, I literally, that 650 was straight upper body. Like all upper body. No drive, and um, I just missed 683 at the top. Wow. All in, uh, so I should have hit 700 at that meet. And um, and then uh, ended up not getting that at that meet. Um, followed it up. I was supposed to have the greatest training cycle ever. I was actually doubling 705 raw. And um, it went, and there's actually a video of that online. Yeah, jeez. And uh, went, went to a meet up in uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And uh, the night before the meet, I ended up getting a flu bug. And, uh, it always spent, fucking you know, happens like that. Spent all night on the freaking shitter and um, puking and pooping. That's so. why I think sometimes the worst training cycles you do better in the gym. Yeah. You had those great ones that some bullshit like that yep, happens, yep. Mike. So ended up ended up not getting not getting it. And uh, I didn't even compete. Um, I tried to recreate the training cycle and went down to Nashville to a big meet down there. Yeah. And um, ended up tearing the pack with 680. Damn. And, uh, that was that was the beginning of the downhill slope. So yeah. and I uh, haven't really got anything good to carry ever since then. Well, Mike, I tell you, uh I don't know how anybody's bench press doesn't go up by just fucking watching this. Cuz <laughs> um, it was uh it was great. It, it was a great experience to have you come out here. I appreciate your friendship all these oh, years yeah, of helping always, me and the always. guys and uh we'll have you back on soon. Mike Wolf, Corey G, Gcast, we out.